Okay. Next to the last chapter of God's book. I gotta go through this preamble every time because a lot of people, this may be the first video that they see and not realize this is God's book. That I am the righteous servant Moshiach of Isaiah 11, 43, and 53, 53, excuse me. And I am. God's here. This is the day of the Lord. Something I haven't heard any rabbis teaching. They, they teach Messianic era. Basically heaven on earth. Which is not in the Hebrew Bible. Neither is world exaltation of the Jewish people. Not in there. But they preach there. I think that primary, it stems from some of the prophets and the initial interpretation of the day of the Lord, which is changed dramatically in Malachi 3. God's last words is when he announces the day of the Lord, the day I am preparing. Well, that's this day. Started in 1948 when they returned after the Holocaust. That's all it's ever been. You can tell the Jewish people. It's, it's not that y'all sin too much or you, or you need to sin less. Maybe God will come back. Uh, there's no numerology that you can figure it out. It's just y'all come back, I'll come back. Make the land bloom again. Store the city. It's been, it was desolate for 2,000 years before the exiles came back and built the second temple after God had forgiven their sins as a holy seat. Oh, and Jerusalem rebuilt. God will make a new covenant with you. Well, if God's making a new covenant with you. He's got to be here. That's when he returns. And the new covenant, all, all these things are in Jeremiah 31. The land, See a time is coming. The land will bloom again. See a time is coming. The ruined cities will be restored and Jerusalem rebuilt. See a time is coming. I'll make a new covenant with you. Well, the time is here. Because the land does bloom again. Israel is one of the most beautiful countries in the world. Ruined cities restored, Jerusalem rebuilt. This is it. So you say, well, where's the covenant? Well, you've got to have a prophet like Moses. <laughs> and that's the man of Isaiah 53. The righteous servant, Moshiach, is also the prophet like Moses. No, okay. Uh, well, you can only find out, there's also a covenant of friendship, but uh, that's just something God grants when Moshe acts here. And basically it is, I'll make the land bloom again, <laughs> I'm going to place my temple amongst you. He knows it's not there, he knew it wasn't going to be there when he had this written in Jeremiah. Um uh, but that's where you, uh, you find God saying, I'm sending my messenger before me. Chapter 3, verse 1. I'm sending my messenger before me. The messenger is Elijah. And I will return to my temple suddenly. And the angel of the covenant that you desire is already on the way. That's the covenant of Jeremiah 31. Sin forgiveness. Uh-oh. I gotta fix my backdrop. This won't take long. There it goes. <laughs> so he dictated this book to me as he dictated the Torah to Moses. And what your rabbis don't know is that he also dictated to all the prophets of the Book of the Prophets. There's about 20 of them, something like that. The books that, that, that are in their name, that they wrote for God, just like I wrote this for God. And 
Moses couldn't uh, uh, possibly have the knowledge to write the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, the Torah. And it, it, same thing for the prophets. They all had to be told by God, commanded and directed, what to write. Okay. I couldn't have known all this information myself. No rabbi today has this knowledge that's in this book. It's all brand new. And scripture. Anybody should want to read it. Or watch me read it to them on these 50, well, more like 66 videos, because a lot of them are broken into 30-minute parts. Some of them are very long. Chapter 49, the final prophet of God. When Muhammad was 40 years old, he was commanded by God through his angel, Gabriel. Okay, 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 hold on a second. All that I'm about to read, the next three paragraphs, are from, God had me copy this, Al Al Islam, the birth of Islam and the proclamation by Muhammad of his mission. So, <laughs> this isn't necessarily something I would say, primarily because there's no angel Gabriel. No. Actually, it's not the, there's no Gabriel in the Hebrew Bible that's an angel. And, and Daniel, which is not a book of the prophets, there's, there's a, 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 is it a dream or a vision? Somebody has a dream, and there's a man, Gabriel, in it. He's just a man. Pretty sure it's Christianity that came up with the angel Gabriel. <laughs> well, let's start over. When Muhammad was 40 years old, he was commanded by God through his angel, Gabriel, to declare his oneness to the idolatrators and polytheists of the whole world, and to deliver the message of peace in an embattled humanity. In response to this command of heaven, Muhammad launched the momentous program called Islam, which was to change the destiny of mankind forever. And they would say, God is Allah. There is no Allah. There is no Jesus. There is only the God of Israel, and he did create all things and humanity, but he formed, he chose it, uh, the, the Jewish people, he formed them, yeah, there's a video on that in the book, I'm not going to get into all that, he formed them, he's forming me, you know, I'm one of his creation, and, uh, but he's prepared me to be a prophet, been going on 16 years, but this is the day of the Lord. And this is my greatest proof is this book because this knowledge is just unknown anywhere else. And it's all backed up. Everything is backed up by Scripture, usually in another book. That the rabbis just couldn't, you know, he wanted me to have this kind of a proof where I could be his teacher. He was in Hira when one day the archangel Gabriel appeared before him and brought to him the tidings that God had chosen him to be his last messenger to this world. That would be me, by the way. I'm not. They're going to say I'm blaspheming him, but they're going to hear it. And had, the Muslims. And had imposed upon him the duty of leading mankind out of the welter of sin, error, and ignorance into the light of guidance, truth, and knowledge. Sounds like a plagiarism of the Hebrew Bible. There's supposed to be a light for God. And they came up with one God. According to the accounts of Shia, Muslims, Muhammad Mustafa, far from being surprised or frightened by the appearance of Gabriel, 
welcomed him as if he had been expecting him. Gabriel brought the tidings that Allah had chosen him to be his last messenger to mankind and congratulated him on being selected to become the recipient of the greatest of all honors for a mortal in this world. That's where it ends. For now, Islam, the birth of Islam, and the proclamation by Muhammad and his mission. Okay, this is in quotes. Muslims believe that the Quran was already revealed by God to the final prophet, Muhammad, through the Archangel Gabriel. Incrementally over a period of some 23 years, beginning on December 22nd, 609 Common Era, when Muhammad was 40, and concluding in 632, the year of his death. Muslims regard the Quran as Muhammad's most important miracle, a proof of his prophethood and the culmination of a series of divine messages starting with those revealed to Adam and ending with Muhammad. How do they know about Adam? God didn't write their book, and he didn't write the New Testament for the Christians. Men wrote the Koran. Men wrote the Gospels, not inspired by the Holy Spirit and not dictated by God. And they got so many problems in that book. According to tradition, several of Muhammad's companions served as scribes and recorded the revelations. Shortly after his death, the Quran was compiled by the companions who had written down or memorized parts of it. That's from Wikipedia uh, on Quran. In the writing of Al-Islam, it is said that Muhammad was in here when one day the Archangel Gabriel appeared before him and brought to him the tidings that God had chosen him to be his last messenger to this world. God chose his last messenger long before the time of Muhammad in Malachi 3. Elijah, which, again, four righteous servants to come. Only one description, the righteous servant of God. I am the fulfillment of all four of those unfilled prophecies. Two are left. I've got to deliver two covenants. Covenant of sin forgiveness and the covenant of friendship. And in the Hebrew Bible, as far as prophecy is concerned, is done. So, uh, Elijah, to re <clears throat> well, I mean, that's the righteous servant, Moshiach, Elijah, prophet like Moses. <laughs> that's another way to say it. Elijah, to arrive in a time to come, and a time is here, day of the Lord, from Jeremiah 31, is here to deliver the new covenant to the Jewish people and recounsel the families one to the other through Judaism and clear the way for God to return to his temple, which means be instrumental in convincing the Jewish people they have to build it. He's here. He's waiting to see if they'll do it. If they don't, utter destruction will come to the land. That's God's words. His last words to the prophets before he starts speaking to them in Malachi 3. That's his last, last thing he says. Build it. Never defeat it and disperse it again. That's in the covenant of friendship. And you can find it in Jeremiah. So it's imperative. I, I don't know why the rabbis don't teach this. And I don't know why. Uh, they haven't built it. What about never again, never forget? You got God's word saying something bad's going to happen to you. From the Middle East, in all likelihood, and Iran, nuclear bombs, Lebanon, and you're about to go to war with them right now, it seems like. 
tensions are high anyway. Uh, Egypt has a military commander as its leader. Jordan always jump in there. It doesn't have to be on the Temple Mount. I know that's a big problem. Well, yeah, we, we can't. They, they consider that the uh, Islamic third holiest uh, site. Uh, God says it's too small. It's tainted with Islam. And uh, Jordan controls it. So, uh, but it, needs, it has to be on Mount Zion. And that's what the Hebrew Bible says. Mount Zion, my temple on Mount Zion. Doesn't say the temple now, which is purchased by David as an atonement to God for failing in a test he was put to. Uh, a restitution, so to speak. <laughs> Repentance and restitution purchased by King David. So it is, uh, and, and that's in the Hebrew Bible. But here's the thing. I am a descendant of his because... The Spirit, in chapter 11, the Spirit of God alights upon the twig of the shoot of the stump of Jesse. The well, stump of Jesse is King David's father. So I am in the antrust, his ancestral tree, uh, albeit only a twig. <laughs> only a twig. But, uh, yeah, they can give me a power of attorney to people who raised the money for the land. And uh, we'll get it in the name of David as agent and attorney, in fact, for whoever. You know, obviously, I <laughs> wouldn't put it in my name. But there, you know, no shit, David. I should certainly could do all kinds of things. And it'll be just like Temple Mount, purchased by King David. God says you can even move that wall if you want to. You know, I, I got a feeling they'd want it to stay there. Well, maybe every, maybe some people just like going to the wall don't want to go to the temple. <laughs> you never know. Religious people are quirky sometimes. Stuff just gets made up in religion. You have to understand, I was an atheist for 50 years. God orchestrated my life from birth. Did not reveal himself to me till I was 50. To make sure I lived a life to fit the verses of Isaiah 53. Pain, suffering, grievous bodily injuries. <laughs> it's all in there. Uh, familiar with disease, crushed with disease, but given long life. And boy, that's 53.10, and I fit that to a T. Consider it fulfilled. 53.10. When Elijah comes, God's servant David and the prophet like Moses. With Elijah comes God's servant David, the righteous servant David. He call, That's what he calls Moshe, my servant David, a shepherd. He's not a king. There's no kingdom. God knew Israel would be a democratic country. And the prophet like Moses, they are all one man. And that man is God's righteous servant of Isaiah 53. God's righteous servant, Moshek, it is the final prophet and messenger bringing covenants of God, not Muhammad. Okay, finally, last chapter, 50. It's fun to watch him, but I, I'm so tired of having to, this preamble I have to put in there that this is God's book and he wrote the whole book and on and on before I get to the chapter. This is called the Day of the Lord, which is today. And it's very important. It's very important. Because I think this is where the idea of a Messianic era began. And greatly elaborated on by Rambam. And still taught today. But the fact is, there are seven prophets who talked about it. And basically, it was the elimination of all evil and sin in the world, primarily through wars with Agog and Gog or Armageddon or this or that, not, which doesn't make any sense. 
I mean, you guys have war that covered the entire earth with all evil and sin being killed. Guess what? I bet evil and sin would win. <laughs> That's what I think. And they don't play fair. Um, but God changed it. In Malachi 3, the last time you see the day of the Lord. And it, actually, he says, uh, the day I am preparing, I guess I am teaching that that's the day of the Lord. I'm the only teacher he recognizes. He dismisses, when, when Moshe acts here, he has a reckoning with and dismisses all of the shepherds. That's all of the rabbis are now dismissed before God. And I'm the only prophet he recognizes, uh, teacher. And that's to make them come teach this book. If they want to get back in my saying with God, they're going to have to teach this book. They're going to have to tell their followers. Like Toby, a singer, saying 53 is Israel, with the most ridiculous commentary. It's an absurdity. Jews for Judaism know better. Also saying, Toby's got 66,000 followers that he's teaching this to. That 53 is Israel. You know what kind of a hindrance that is for God in me? To get back to Israel, to get people to believe it's not Jewish people. It's not Israel. Toby said it is. Jews for Judaism says it is. Who are you? <laughs> I got news for you. I'm the righteous servant. Now, I'm the only man who's ever explained it properly. It's crafty. There's all kinds of twists and this and that to that uh, writing of Isaiah 53. Isaiah didn't come up with it on his own. Hey, the Lord. Thank you for watching.